paragraph on the thing, the number of questions that's come through, and the the call. I mean, it always will when you've got the transport and the cycling walking, which is kind of predominant in this report, and also we would need something uh, on the uh, intention to make sure it continues. But the other point I wanted to raise was about electric cars and where we're going in the future. Some of the developers now are moving towards the next generation of cars and they will be electric cars. There's nothing in the report we can see whereby electric charging points and various other things uh, will be put in place as part of the transport plan. Again, yeah, okay, in a similar way to what you said about uh, planning for the developers, uh, that is something that all, all districts are now fully conscious of and we will be really pressing developers to do that. But it's not just developers, we have a responsibility ourselves. Yeah. We as the district have to take the lead on that. You know, we're seen not to be providing those sorts of facilities, then why should anybody else? So I'm sure as districts you're already working on that, providing them with the of stadiums and so on. Uh, we have to continue to do that. We have to be at the forefront if others are going to do it as well. Natalie, then um, Steve, then Jerry. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much for this report. It's a breath of fresh air. I just want to commend um, for the quality and diversity implication. There's many times you see there are two lines and it doesn't go in depth enough um, looking at the equality and diversity implications. So just to put on record that really proud, really happy to see that uh, consideration has been taken for in terms of that and hope that you know all the other reports that come in terms of to this committee in terms of equality and diversity, consideration is taken to that. Thank you. Yeah, if I could just follow up on that, because that's really, really important. Um, can we, is it Suzanne Kerr who wrote the report, wasn't it? Can we give her a big pat on the back? Because what she regularly done with the literacy is exemplary um, style kind of approaches to equality and diversity implications in her reports. Um, can we make sure, make sure it's in the minutes? that we expect anyone who's writing a report to actually have a look at what Suzanne does and make sure that's properly uh, reflected in exactly the same way. We'll take that message back to everyone. It's all of our responsibilities to make sure that's reflected uh, in future reports. I'm sure she'll appreciate that too, thanks. Steve? Yeah. Um, this, this is really uh, a good report, but at, at the end of it all, it's all about Thing that we have to change in people's behaviour, and it's it's long and entrenched behaviour people have. And my my bugbear around this is the, the school trip. You often see very short journeys being taken children to school, and that is almost setting the trend for that child for the rest of its life because it, it expects to go with a short journey in a car or you know some other not by walking or cycling, whatever. So my, my, I think the emphasis should be about behavioural change at the earliest stage for, for our citizens because it is a long term strategy, it's not, not gonna not gonna happen overnight. So so that, that would be my plea that, that we, we concentrate on that because we 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 all just been through that phase and we've all been going to work when the schools are on holiday, roads are quiet. As soon as schools are back in, so there's far too many vehicles on the roads during school time and, and, and most people are doing a, a short run which I think is, is something we should be concentrating on. And the economic growth issue is, you know, the, the, the will on occasions. I mean, I would have hoped in 2022 we'd have been full of extra vehicles with extra emissions for Commonwealth Games, but it doesn't look as though that is going to happen. There's no sort of balance that you, you will always have to have. And I heard, I heard Councillor Crone speaking with extreme negativity about the, the Commonwealth Games only, only yesterday. Well, perhaps it got as rich there, the Commonwealth Games doesn't look like it's going to come to Liverpool, but that, that sometimes has to be a compromise about growth. And the other thing that I've always had an issue with, we've also got to get the message across to the general public that whilst they're seeing the cycle lane being built, with all, all the good credit for that, sometimes they're often built alongside a road that's full of potholes. And the general public can't make that transition in their own mind. Why you've got money for, or why you're spending money on a cycle lane, but you're not doing some of the basics on the infrastructure that. Uh, that we, we know a lot. So, so there's lots of compromises, lots of difficulties uh, 
going on, but I would, would suggest that we start at the base level and that's that journey to school, which seems to flood the roads uh, exponentially from the previous case. I mean, it's a very good point. I mean, your officers are well aware of this. It's the challenge we face for years. Uh, Carol and I always speak about how different it is to change people's behaviours. To be honest, I think that's probably why cycling walking, I wouldn't say it doesn't kick into the long grass, uh, but it, it's not progressed as rapidly as some of the other more developments simply because the challenge of changing people's behaviours is, is more difficult than perhaps building some new infrastructure. Um, you know, and hopefully through this strategy, but also through the road safety strategy. We, we will begin to look more closely at how we can change these behaviours. Road safety strategy. I mean, what one shame, for example, is if you remember, uh, it wasn't until a few years ago that we all had school travel plan officers, uh, but the funding for that was taken away. Um, and, and I personally, I think that was a real shame. Uh, my own district, we managed to get a travel plan in every school. Uh, but since those officers have gone, unfortunately, they're probably uh, most of them are now just sat on the shelf somewhere. I think it's a real shame. And if we can uh, begin to address that problem, push it on the impacts that might well uh, resurrect those offices, then, then that, would, that would be a great thing. Um, but it, it will undoubtedly be a challenge. Got Jerry and then Ken. Ken. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, thanks for the department. Uh, the uh, thing is, it's, it's extremely laudable, not are you know in Halton? I mean, when we have the the, uh, the new towns in Halton, we had also in what is now Stockbridge Village, which we council thought it was pedestrian only, and it cost the council millions of pounds because the people wouldn't accept it. I mean, you know, people's aspirations, unfortunately, is to get a job, earn enough money, and buy a car. We want a road. It's not laudable saying you should do this, you should do this, but you know. It does cost the councils an awful lot of money to sort of, as you were saying about putting things in the planning applications, how they should uh, plan these uh, areas. I mean, hopefully, Scrumcon's experienced it, Nosley's experienced it, but, you know, the council says you speak to the people and see if the people want it. You know, it's all well having committees, but if the people aren't engaged, it won't work. Yeah, because you can't I think that's important that you know, to understand that you know, we can't do things to people. That's why we're saying that some of the people are changing the thing about that. The important thing that maybe I haven't come across that much in this strategy is we've spoken a bit about walking cycling because there is no home for that as a strategic level at the moment. But this is a local journey strategy, and it's about short journeys. And some of those are by bus, some of those are by other forms. Um, and so it's 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 two fellows trying to put the walking cycle in place, but for me, um, certainly currently cycling was around one one percent, something like that. Not that even though it has increased, it's still not that much. And it may be that we have to look at the fact that it won't ever increase much beyond this five percent, something depending on what conditions are. But you're right, if people will, will vote with their feet or with their car or whatever, the people will do what they think is right for them. So what this strategy is about is is also a, a, a local city region strategy. It's not a metropolitan strategy. It's not a district strategy for anyone around this table. And if you read it, it's actually most of the activity cannot be delivered by the transport theme. And that's what the exciting opportunity is for me with the mayor, because the mayor does sit across all the themes now, and we do have an opportunity to say these things are, need to happen. But actually. Can you, Mr. Mayor, and others take them and help happen, make them happen in other themes? Because without that, we won't get very far. And that's why I think some of the issues that people mentioned around some specifics that aren't in here, some of the specifics that we do want are not for within our gift. So when we, this delivery program that we're going to have to develop is going to be quite challenging because we are not going to sit around and think about what we think is the right answer. We're going to have to work with colleagues in other themes and think of what is possible. And you're quite right, you know, if you build a housing development where you can't park your car, maybe some people won't buy houses there. So it's not about doing it to people or even doing it with people, it's putting it in creating the conditions where people can choose it if it fits for them. Because some people might not want to ever cycle, some people might be able, that's one of the things you talked about. 
So it might be about scooters and stuff like that, but it's not mentioned at the moment, you know, we're not able to get around, but it's more about us taking this sort of themes to create the conditions where those shorter journeys aren't by car. So that's what we're trying to do here. And so Nick has talked about the walking cycle because it is integral, but it's not got a strategic home at the moment. And that's what this is about. So it's about people in this room and we're just helping us to take this into a theme to make it happen, as opposed to trying to get the money to do with two people at the other. Gordon and then Harry. Thank you, and that just about covered the uh, whole area that I was, that I was coming out to because it did about that. Uh, from the, what the Metro Rail is saying about the dialogue <coughs> and understanding all the things. This is the, uh, this is the outline, the strategy, and I'm, I'm sure all the details can be filled in because as we've had the conversation, Jim, you know, the, the, uh, a lot of your mothers may not be aware of the fact that you pushed in on top of that in a push chair. That toddler is the most exposed pedestrian there is to all the toxins in the air. The pollutants in the air, again, are exactly at that level, not the adults at all. Because what is the cost then? So when you represent an area that has high levels of deprivation, poor health, a lot of traffic, you then get into respiratory and dignity problems. The whole back people get a good education because there's so much being done the medication to deal with that sort of those those other problems that are taking their away. What is the health what is the health cost that uh, contribute to let that go? We then get vehicles that before they travel the same distance, the the catalyst converters they're not effective. This isn't the detail that's wanted in this at the moment. It's the start to get those people with the expertise talking together about how we do that. And that was very interesting about the schools. I mean, that, that, that issue has got worse and worse all the decades. And what will happen in general terms for business, because we, we, it's not just the extension, it's a business protection. What will happen is business will find it harder. They will have <coughs> got several billions of pounds less than the uh, an economic deficit to the nation because of traffic jams, logistically trying to move things around. People will move away from areas where they put congestion. We have the, uh, the, the Mayor of London looking at how we can grab all the sort of cars after the city. Really. If you can do those things, I think it's a great thing to be able to get at least a recognition that there's a farm more than just the transport side. That's very much it. Thank you. 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 Thank the train to the bus, or the bus to the train, and, and unfortunately, in most on most occasions, people don't do that because we haven't yet found a way of uh, matching the two uh, transport systems. So maybe that's something that needs um, uh, looking as part of the uh, of, of, of the strategy. Um, Councillor McGuffin referred to Holtman. Yes, Mick will know from a professional level far than I. Rock on New Town was designed to to ensure that if you used a car, you had to go the long way around, and etc. And it hasn't worked. It's as simple as that. It just hasn't worked. And I must say, Councillor Crown, I'm amused at this idea of this four or five bedroom house executive estate being built with no car parking facilities. I don't think they sell many bloody houses. Sorry, I don't think they sell many houses in that situation. Unless, of course, people think well, it's all right for those in 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 um, in affordable homes, they don't need a car. We have a major problem in our area, and, and I suspect all over the country, that the people who live in the most difficult economic circumstances, who maybe can't even afford a car, don't mind a green car, also tend to live in an area where there's no public transport either. So it, it isn't a case of them not making short trips of car, it's how they make any journeys as well. What I'm trying to say Mick, is I'm glad I'm not the one who's responsible for what we get together. I'm sure you'll succeed, but it might oh boy, it's a challenge. In terms of collective responsibility, yeah, we're all yeah. responsible. <laughs> um, is there any further, John? Just, just a very quick one for me. Thanks very much for your presentation, Mick. It was excellent. Just to let you know, the councillors uh, Philbin, Howard, and Stockton will be implementing this policy immediately after this meeting. We're going to walk to the train station.
Um, I'm going to make a suggestion because um, I think this is excellent as a first step in the journey, as you said. And actually, the kind of debate and discussion we've had here has aroused a lot of passions and a lot of really good ideas. And because we like strategies here, but we don't like strategies that sit on shelves and do nothing, and we can point at what we've done with the rail strategy, the bus strategy, the ferry strategy, the freight strategy, and how all those segments actually start to be delivered. Where the power of this will come is in that delivery plan. And obviously we've got to pull that implementation plan together. So I'm going to suggest that we have a proper detailed workshop session in the next couple of months where all of us as members actually can get our heads into the detail of this and start influencing what that delivery plan should look like. Because um, it all sounds great, but let's make sure we start looking at how in detail we actually kind of put it into practice. Because what this boils down to, I don't believe there's a trade-off between economic growth and actually more sustainable transport. Because what I think it boils down to is frankly quality of life. You know, that it's not nice living next to a dual carriageway that's stuffed up with, uh, with cars. People actually want to uh, live in an environment that kind of feels uh, much more kind of communal in its sense. And actually by doing that, means people kind of get out more and have more opportunities that come with all of that. So I don't believe there's a trade-off, but I do think it's incumbent on all of us to actually start putting the meat on the bones of this and making sure that in the next few years we can point to stuff and say, that's where we start to make a difference. Because, um, yeah, changing public opinion and public attitudes and particularly public behaviour is a challenge. But you know what? We've done that here. Yeah, we can look at what we've done and got more people onto buses. We've changed people's behaviour. We can look at what we've done about how we've reduced crime and antisocial behaviour on the transport network. We have changed people's behaviour for the more positive and the better. And that's before you look at many other things in kind of society about how you can actually influence things and get things uh, better for people by actually putting something in place that's an improvement that people prefer to do instead. So that's the clarion call. Let's pull something together and then let's actually kind of run with it and make it happen. Is all of that with paragraph two agreed? Yes, agree. Marvellous. Okay then, uh, last few items. Uh, item eight is the public question time, and we haven't had any questions, but item nine is petitions and statements, and uh, William Shortall has got a statement for us, for us. So William, do you want to come forward and, and read that out? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I know everyone here is committed to be the best possible transport system for the City region, however, I would like to point out that the number four bus route, which is a supported bus route, unfortunately does not meet the full needs of the city region users of that particular route. In particular, the students and school children who may use that bus service to get to schools and colleges. To satisfy that bus route, you have to wait one hour uh, between buses every day, Monday to Sunday, Monday to Saturday, with no buses on the Sunday at all. Uh, given that school, uh, school pupils and those at Greenbank College in particular may depend on this bus route, which also services Sefton Park and the place where lots of beds are held. I would suggest this is not a good service as can be offered and can be improved upon. I would suggest that in school terms, uh, the service could be two buses every hour, not one, and a Sunday service could be introduced, especially as lots of local city events um, take place in Sefton Park. That is, lots of local, national, and international, including sporting events, take place at the Green Bank Sports Academy, also part of the Green Bank College and run by the Green Bank Project Charity. Throughout the year, and with events held on Sundays especially, bus, if there's no bus service, it makes it really job difficult for people and it's not helpful. You say in your local document, local journey strategy on page 86 of this agenda and on page 32 of the report, that you want to improve access to leisure and health and improve access to education and training. Uh, I would ask that you give some consideration then by making the number four bus route every half hour for six days a week until 11 p.m., which is important as people work or students take night classes. And as currently this bus service ends at 7 p.m., uh, I'm making an hourly service on uh, Sunday. I hope the committee will give this a consideration and rather than uh, make it a bone of contention through campaigning. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, obviously, we'll get the, the detailed um, response within the 10 working days. Uh, lots to kind of consider in there, some very simple um, questions 
uh, that you've raised. Obviously, it's, it's always a challenging issue because it's a subsidised bus at a time when uh, a lot of our resources have been significantly uh, pared back. But there could well be conversations with Capital School about the contribution that they might be able to make. Um, but let us look into all those details and come back to you with a detailed response within 10 days. Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Could my dissent be uh, recorded for item 7, please? Technically, we have already dealt with it, um, Tom, and you didn't at the time we were taking the vote say that. Um, so we should have really kind of done that at the time. Mm -hmm. Really, it was just a call for agreement and everyone said agree and there was no sort of vote taken on the item? Yeah, but if you'd have said uh, I don't have the time, then obviously we could have recorded that. But we have moved on now, so I'm sorry, we can't do that at this stage now. Final item is any other urgent business, and uh, we haven't had any, um, so if I can close the meeting, I'll thank your attendance. Thank you.